Welcome to the part 8. In this part, we are going to discuss about the various ways we can approach animations in our React application. We'll be using the React transition group and style components to style our users list application. So far, we have this. We have styled our application. We have styled our list. Now, as a next step, we are going to implement a staggered list animation here using style components and React transition group. So let's see how we can do that. First, we have to understand how animations work in style components. The way you simply introduce the animations in CSS is by writing the at the rate keyframes thing. So similarly, let's animate this list holder that we have here. So it's present, the reference is present here in the list, uh, in the list CSS. So let's create an animation of fade in. So the CSS3 animations, we have to specify keyframes. We have to specify points in the timeline that where, where do you want to start and where do you want to end? For example, everything starts from 0% or an alias for 0% is there as well. It's called as from. So if I'm fading in, I'll have to work on the opacity property and two, two or 100% both are the same things and it goes like this and in between also if i want something if i want to control something like 40 percent so if i want at 40 percent to have the opacity of 50 so it will be like this but anyway we gradually want to increase the uh, opacity so this is fine and here we can write this thing, specify the animation, and then we can specify the duration. That's the time over which we want the animation to happen. And then there are a couple of more properties. So it's difficult to understand. It's difficult to remember them all. These are the animation duration is very important. So you have to specify the duration either using the S as the suffix, which stands for seconds, or multiply it by thousand and you can specify as milliseconds. So 400 milliseconds is equivalent to 0 0.4, 0 0.4 seconds. And then we have um, animation timing function. So that represents how the animation will behave with the time. So we want an ease in out sort of function. You can specify in a specific cubic bezier function as well. And animation delay is one thing so so right now the animation will just start as soon as you'll start seeing this list holder component on the screen list holder element on the screen but if you want to delay that animation by a certain amount so for example by 200 milliseconds if you want to delay the animation to start you can specify that here and same goes for the, there's another property called as animation iteration count so if you want to animate so for example, after four seconds, four milliseconds, the animation will stop. And, and if you want to restart the animation again, so you can specify the number of iterations that you want to see the animation. So if you want the animation to be stuck in an infinite loop, so for example, if you have a loader wherein uh, it starts from zero and zero degrees and completes a circle back and then again you want to start so in that case infinite will be really helpful and yeah these are the major properties that help animating any css element let's see what we have here so far we have just created an opacity thing to our list holder and it doesn't seem to make any difference if i Increase the time here to 1.4 seconds. Effect here that you can see. Yeah. So that's about creating animations with the CSS. The next way is to let's integrate this thing inside our style component. So we have this thing here and instead of this, let's have this list holder 
and let's create a style component here first of all let's import the styled from styled components and now let's create a list holder style component styled dot div and let me copy the styles from the class that I had here and so same way I'll copy this keyframes but in the styled components world we have a keyframe equivalent called as a keyframes import which is a function in JavaScript and by using the let me assign it some name fade in keyframes let's say fade in animation equals to so instead of wrapping everything in curly brackets we'll wrap everything inside these back ticks using the same kind of syntax that style components use and and instead of providing the name here we will provide the variable that we just created called as fade in animation by dynamically interpolating it inside the back text present here and it should behave the same way and so now if I reload it it's behaving the same way now in order to understand the react transitions that are present inside the react transition group package we need to understand first how it works so consider this example in code sandbox that I've created so we have a simple button and on the click of this button there's a box that appears and performs these animations and stays there and when I click hide box before unmounting the component it performs all these animations and then drops it and then again it will be show animation and hide animation like this so how we can create this is by let me copy a initial version which looks like this which is nothing but a button and a box so if you were to show a box you could do it like this you have this boolean show box and the general way is what we do is we wrap it inside the boolean and so that when I show show the box it'll it will make this boolean true and we'll get to see the box and if I hide box it will hide the box but this way please mind that we can't perform the animations we we can technically perform the enter animation that when the uh, when the box appears we can apply the animation here like this animation and for example I have this box enter animation keyframe specified here and if I just place it and in this shorthand property let's see what happens so we are able to perform this animation and that's working fine it's just the timer is a little high so if I do this and do it again so after 1.3 seconds it's coming back to the same position and what if I, if I want to make it stay over there so there exists a property called as animation fill mode and if I set it to as forwards what what it does is so now if I click this so as you notice the last state the last keyframe state which was a transform translate of 70 VW what generally happens is when the animation expires the element comes back to its initial position which was translate of X of 0 but here by specifying this we are telling the browser to maintain the last keyframe style that was applied to that particular component or element when that animation happened so forwards mean that and same way there's a backwards that helps us when with the animation delays we'll talk about and if you want both forwards and backwards we can specify both you can read more about this on MDN by the way so that's just a tiny thing 
worth discussing but um, that's that's about the entire animation that when the component gets mounted you are performing something but with this approach you can't perform an unmount animation that is when the component is about to get hidden so the component is getting actually removed from the component hierarchy the dom tree itself so there is no possible way you can apply some transformation or perform some animation before the component gets unmounted because it's entirely wrapped into this conditional here so as soon as i click here it gets unmounted so react provides a way to handle this problem and that is called as a react transition group the way you do that is by installing this dependency called as react transition group and you need to import something called as the transition component from react transition group and instead of wrapping it inside this conditional we'll wrap our box inside the transition and this accepts some properties we'll wrap our box with transition so it accepts some properties the very important property is called as in property now this in property determines when the transition will start and when when any transition will start so there are two kinds of transitions that it has to offer one is called the enter transition and the other one is exit transition enter transition means the component it means that the in property is set to true so that's when the enter transition happens and if it is false the exit transition starts to happen so for example this is a this accepts a boolean and show box is a perfect candidate to be placed here so which means if i click this button i i am asking react to perform the transition for this box and we'll see that in a moment further and i'll have to apply something called as a timeout that is the duration of each transition so for example if i want the transitions to happen over a span of 2000 milliseconds which is 2 seconds it will uh, it will make that work and inside this the the so instead of accepting the box as a property box as an element inside it it will accept a function callback function inside it and that function accepts a state it's similar to the way how we write our event handlers generally in javascript we get this parameter and based on the parameter we perform some callback sort of thing so this function will get called every time the state changes the transition state changes so the state can be in either of the four states it's called as entering entered exiting and exited so entering happens when in is evaluated to true and after the timeout specified which is 2000 milliseconds it gets into the entered state and similarly when the show box is false when the in property is false the uh, it it gets into the exiting state and after 2000 millisecond it gets exited so also if you want fine grain control on the timeouts here if you want a separate timer for enter and separate for exit you can specify it here so that's about the states so now let's see what we can do here so we have to return our box component from here and we since box is a style component we have to manipulate the style based on the state argument present here so we can maybe pass it as a prop and inside here we can use it to control to apply animations based on the state so for example if it is an entering animation entering transi transition we can apply the box enter animation and if it is an exiting one we can apply the box exit animation so the way we do that is by using the prop syntax props and we have this props called as state if props dot state is equals to entering then we want to apply this animation of
box enter animation. Now in the recent versions of style components, it can't accept these dynamic parameters inside a sub uh, string here. So there's a helper called a CSS helper that it provides. So we just need to import that and use that here. And that's valid now. And same way, I will apply another conditional that says if the state is into the exiting state, then at that time we have to perform the box exit animation. Okay. And the duration we have to set as. Also, we have to make sure the animation duration would not exceed this time window that we have got because that's a time window in which this transition is happening from entering to enter and exiting to exited. So for the enter, we have this 2000 and for the exit, we have this 3000. So we have to make sure our animation doesn't exceed that. So I can have two seconds here. And in case of exiting, I can have three seconds here. And that is it. And since I'm using TypeScript and this is a state prop, transition state. I can specify it like this. Okay. And let's see how it works now. So our entering transition has triggered and it has again come back instead of the fact that I have specified the animation fill mode. Why this is happening? Because uh, after two seconds, the this, this condition got expired and our animation is no more. So all both of these statements are gone. The animation is also gone and the fill mode is also gone. So that's because the entering phase got ended and it entered the entered phase. So instead of applying one condition here, maybe I can extend this with one more check here that says if either it is entering or entered, I want to keep this. So now it is fixed. And when I click the hide box, the end property becomes false and the exiting process starts, the exiting transition starts and this will become true. These two statements will be uh, removed and this will become true. And this is an exit animation, which is doing nothing but some transformations like from 70 VW to like, uh, it'll first increase the scale and rotate it and it will move it to the center. That is 50 viewport width. And after that, uh, till the end, it will translate it to wire. That will that means it will just drop it till the end and makes it really, really small and change the background color to yellow. So let's see what happens. It's rotating. It came to the middle and it got dropped to the bottom here. Okay. So that's fine now, but there's still one problem the, that our element is showing on the screen. Now why that's happening is because um, anything inside the transition also gets mounted along with it, right? So we might not want that. And and we maybe want to show it only when the in property that we are so only when the show box property is set to true. So transition provides a way to control that. It's called as mount on enter property. And we have to set it to true. And by the way, it's a, a JSX syntax for setting true that we can just skip the equals to true characters and it will behave the same way. So mount on enter is now set. And similarly, unmount on exit is one, which means that after uh, after the exited phase, the component should get unmount. So that's also there. And let's see what different now, now you see it has gone because it was in the exited state and it got unmounted. So it entered and it is there now. And after this, it sh should get unmounted. Yeah. So now if I load this thing, assume this was true, right? And so, so when this is true, when this is um, when this transition is supposed to be performed on mounting, just when the user sees it, uh, it, it gets 
into the entered state. It never gets into the entering state. So since we have applied this check here on the entered state, it is performing this animation. And that was because we had to set this animation film mode both. So if I remove this, you might notice, like if I if that wasn't the case, and if I reload it again, so I'll see this thing, but my animation won't get performed. So that could be, uh, that could not be the thing that you want. That means you want to perform the animation as soon as it lands on the screen. So there exists a, another property called as appear. So what this means is as soon as the component mounts, you want to perform this animation. So which means now the component will enter into the entering state. And now if I reload it, it should perform the animation straight away. Earlier it was performing because of the entered state since we had applied a check over there. So, but in order to explain the how how here property works, I had to remove that. But now I'll now I'll introduce it again. Okay, so that's about the transition component. So there exists another kind of component as well. So so this is fully a JavaScript approach, right? And the, if, if you don't want to use such level of programming logic, there exists a wrapper around this transition component called as CSS transition. So let's try to use that now. So in case of CSS transition, it works the same way as transition, but in a little different manner. So it accepts the same properties, show box and now here it, we don't need to pass this function as an argument function as a child here rather we need to use a simple box a simple element and what it'll do instead of passing the state as an argument it it applies the state classes onto the child that we have passed so for example this box component now will have these classes on it and we can remove all of this. Okay, so let me explain you what, what I mean by that first. Let me open it in another window. And inside the dev tools, we will notice. So we have this, uh, this component here inside. Uh, this is a box component and you notice this class added on it. It's called as enter done. So this enter done class is getting applied to, to this children to the to the child of CSS transition by CSS transition. And whatever state the transition will be in will be added as a class here. So for example, if it is um, enter active, which which is equivalent to our um, enter entering state as previous or when, when it was entered, it will be enter done. Same way if it is like exiting, it will be exit active. And if the exited was there, it will be exit done. And there exists two more classes. It's simply enter and exit, which means that um, the component is about to enter the entering state and the component is about to enter the exiting state. So these are two more classes and besides this we get uh, two more we, we get three more classes it's called as appear appear done and appear appear active so we get this benefit of getting this extra appear class here which segregates it's well from the um from the entering phase so we can perform animations based on the appear phase. We can have separate animation for the appear versus the entering phase. So now all we have to worry about is defining these classes. Now, instead of applying this nasty logic here, we can apply the normal CSS just like we do in pseudo classes. So if you are familiar with the SAS syntax, SCSS, it will be easy. So the way to define a class on a certain element on a certain selector in CSS is by in, in, inside SAS is by using this ampersand and then you can apply dot 
it was um, enter and comma i want to apply the same style to another class on the same selector which will which is uh, up here so in case the component mounts or the components component gets updated with this show box uh, when the show box um, property is updated or when the component appears for the first time and the in property is also true so we want to perform this box enter animation and similarly if the component is exiting phase is in its exiting phase we can apply this transition this animation for exit phase and looks fine now let's see whether it works so it's again coming back here now again we have to we'll have to add one more class which is dot enter done so enter done means it, it it's in the entered phase now so let me hide it and re-trigger it yep it, it stays there and this also works fine now so both appear and appear done and enter done they are the same so you can in order to for the sake of completeness we'll do appear done cool so this is how the css transitions work in react transition group now let's move back coming back to our application now we have to implement the similar sort of fade in effect for our each items these user items here so the first thing that we need to do is wrap both of them inside the transition element and of course we'll have to install the transition using npm using npm installed react transition group i've already installed it and we just need to import the transition and let's specify some properties like in to true so there is no conditional here i want to show this i want to perform the transition as soon as the component loads on the screen right there's no there's no such functionality that on the click of the button you want to show a certain user item that would be the case for a use case uh, for a to do application i'll show that as a demo in the end so in equals to true also we'll have to set appear because otherwise the component the transition won't enter into the entering phase so that will fail our animation checks and mount on enter is also something i can add that's okay and inside this we can so maybe using css transition will be better here because we are dealing with the appear phase and CSS transitions provide this and it provides that and tr a transition doesn't so and it's also easier to use the only change that I make I have to make here is inside this holder component holder style component which is present in the styles of this file here and in here I'll have to create some classes and the way to do that is like this so I have to go for these things enter and uh, appear and here i'll apply the animation so i have a fade in animation and a fade out animation which just translates from opacity 0 to opacity 1 and i just need to provide it here by using the syntax fade in animation and animation duration is something i have to provide so i have to make sure the animation duration is within the timeout that i need to specify here as let's say 2000 which is two seconds and let's set it to 2000 milliseconds as well here and what else the animation timing function maybe i can apply ease in out and that's it same way if i wanted to apply the exit animation i would have applied here but there's no point 
or use case of exiting any particular component here so that's fine so now if I notice you saw all of them are coming as a faded faded fading in from opacity 0 to opacity 1 so our animation is working now uh, let's move a step further let's create a staggered animation which means based on the position of the element for example this element would get loaded the very fastly and and after like a certain delay of like 100 milliseconds this one gets loaded and after that this will get loaded so after 200 milliseconds this will get loaded and 300 milliseconds this will get loaded so if you see here we are loading the elements with a certain delay so this one gets zero delay this one gets a hundred delay this one gets 200 delay so zero one two three so this seems like a pattern which is associated with their index numbers right so we, we can somehow associate the index to the animation delay so which will create a beautiful staggered effect so for for that i'll have to get a reference of the user item index so user item is being referenced inside this user list component which is rendering user item using this map here so we can pass an index as the uh, we can grab a reference of the index and pass index as a property to our user item component so i've already done that and I just need to reference it here as a prop and pass it as a prop to my style component as holder and inside the holder I'll have to specify something called as animation delay and the delay will be based on the uh, index so for example the first of all let me grab a reference of the index which looks like this index multiplied by some multiplier because one will be very short so let's say 100 and don't forget to specify the num ms as a suffix which stands for milliseconds so let me see what we have so far so we have this beautiful stagger effect but if you notice that the component got mounted first and then they hid away and, and then they showed up on the screen. So that's not a very good thing to have. So the way to handle that is by uh, animation property. So it's completely handled by this animation fill mode property. So you just have to set it to both, which means both backwards and forwards. It means that the animation will keep the properties from will we'll hold it you know till, till the delay has finished so basically that's that's what we want and now if i reload it you see it's a beautiful staggered fade in effect now there could be one problem and by that i mean is that as i mentioned this animation duration has to match the timeout that we are specifying here so this is 2000 milliseconds right but for let's say our 0, 1, 2, let's say the second element, it would be 2200 milliseconds because we aren't taking the animation delay into account. So we have to perform everything inside the 2000 milliseconds. So which means either we have to reduce this, which is not possible, or we'll have to increase the timeout based on the index of a given user item component. So we can do that by doing this index into 100 plus 2000 milliseconds so now it will be an accurate amount of time allowing the every user item component based on the index to have the right window so let me increase the time multiplier here in order to see the effect in a more visible manner you see now it's more visible the elements are loading one by one so that's about creating a staggered effect in our application and there's one more thing that I need to show you is this to do app here and you saw how these items got loaded one by one and if I try to enter one item it gets slided in and if I try to remove it it gets removed out so this is all possible by using this CSS transition from React transition group that we have used. So you can have, I'll, I'll add the link 
of this code sandbox in the description so you can have a look. Congrats guys, we just discussed about the animations in detail in React applications and in the next part we'll be discussing one more very important topic, it's called as forms. So please stay tuned. If you want to learn more, the medium link for the animations is present in the description and the code sandbox as well.